Okay, this video I'm going to show you how to really just get started in Publisher to create documents. Uh, I make uh, lesson plans and learning material, so I export in PDF. In uh, for American people, I or for the American um, paper size, I use the letter size, and for Australia, I obviously use A4. Um, so I'm just going to show you the steps I take to basically get set up. So I've got a, a worksheet I can use and something that I could use as a template uh, moving forward. So the first thing you'll see is the the, the main screen when you open Publisher. Uh, because I have I have Publisher, I have Designer, and I have Photo, I can swap between the programs, and that gives me more options. But that's for another video. Okay, so first thing, like any other program, I'll go New and it'll give me my size options. So for this video, I'm going to go letter and I want it to be uh, a vertical image, so not horizontal. So I'm also wanting it to be a PDF that just can be scrolled through vertically, not with any facing pages. So I'm going to do a couple of things and you can watch my other video to see how you can set this up so you don't have to do this every time. This is from the moment you start. I'm going to get rid of facing pages. So now I've got, should have a nice vertical single page. Now the next thing I want to do is lay out my page. So where do I want to put things? So I'm going to make a couple of text boxes. Now the frame text tool is probably the standard text box similar to what you might have in um, PowerPoint or something or in Canva and this is the artistic tool which is a bit different uh, I'm not going to show you that right now so I'm just going to go frame text so I'll draw a box you can see it's asking me to draw a box and I'm going to make this a uh, just a title box so if I click on it, you can see, you can't quite see, but there is a cursor flashing there. I can type and see what it looks like. So because it's a heading, I'm going to find a, find a good font and then pick the size that I'm fairly happy with. You can change all of this whenever you like. So I'll just put title. Now, I think that's only a pretty short title. I wouldn't use a title that short all the time but I might make it so it fits within the area. I like to reduce overlap because it gets a bit hard to use. Uh, you can refer to the layer system, but you'll see what I mean in a second. So I might put like a lot of worksheets you'd have in a school setting, you would have maybe the name and the date. So I might make a another box. Now I could go back and do another box or I could copy and paste this one. Now there's a couple of ways to copy and paste. There's the old fashioned way where you just copy it and paste it or you can right click it and duplicate it in the in this section here on the right hand side. You could duplicate it or you can do what I prefer which is something I learned a little while ago is you hold down the control button. I use Windows. Hold down control and click on the thing and hold it down and it will just duplicate it and just let go of the mouse button. So you can do these very quickly. So for the name, little name area where a student would write their name, I might have a smaller font, maybe 24 or something. And now I'm going to just make a little line and just call it name name. Now I'm going to, I want one for date as well. Now I could do two things. I could just press enter, I could copy this, press enter, paste it. That's probably what I'd do. But if you want to have a little bit more control on the placement of things, you could instead actually create another text box by just copying and pasting and then just copy and paste that text in. Now I'm going to put that below it. This is where 
see these overlapping lines I find it is a bit difficult to select what I want if my cursor isn't in a spot where that box is so I try to remove any overlap it just so it's a little bit neater so everything sort of sits like a like a little bit of a puzzle now there are some guidelines you can use these the rulers and there's um, locks and all kinds of things guides bleeds margins so you can have a margin you can set up what the margin is um, you can put a grid in which is helpful and that way you can get everything to line up nicely I find the most useful thing is aligning them in the middle a little green line appears right in the center there just helps to line things up a little bit you've got to be careful with the size of the box actually you can see that one that lines up on the grid line but it's not lining up on the box so you just need to they kind of lock in place as well like that so that's another thing that's worth looking at I'll just remove that margin line now say I've got the title name and date now I'm going to have something else say so I'll just write lesson one lesson one might make that a little bit smaller 36 they pr I'd probably do these smaller for an older group but for younger kids maybe bigger text is better or people with reading issues now I might have a how about I make a, a drawing activity or something so I would copy over here and have some instructions maybe some brief instructions and then just whatever I would say okay so make that a bit smaller now there's a lot of playing around here at the moment because I'm setting everything up but what I'll be able to show you is how you can have this just ready to go so you don't have to do this from scratch every time and it's really easy you don't have to look around anywhere for it so there's my instructions and lesson one now I might make a box to do some drawing in I might have a maybe a, one of those you know copy a photograph or copy an image and have a blank spot for it so these instructions would say copy the practice your drawing by copying the image on the left into the blank field on the right now to do that I will make a rectangle maybe a rounded rectangle there's lots of different shapes here and you can customize the shapes as much as you like so I'll make a rectangle maybe like that now the curves look nice but they're probably not suitable for this so I'm going to go up here you'll see there's this little corner picture you can actually have all kinds of different corners I'll just show you the regular rounded one and then you can adjust the amount of curve there is just by using this little slider so I might just make it a subtle curve now you'll see it's a kind of gray color I will make that white and I will give it a border so the stroke is the the line that would go around the outside of any shape and the fill is obviously the center now you can do some lots of things with um, colors and things as well but I'll just show you this quickly so if you click on this here where it says none it will give you a few choices on different things on the style of the border so I'm going to go width maybe three pixels so you can see it's a nice sharp rectangular pixel uh, rectangular box now the other things you can do is you can make a oh, click on it first so I'll make a maybe a broken line like a zigzag uh, like a dotted line um, you can alter that by going up to oh yeah, and all of this that's on the top is also on the side uh, there is a way you can alter that as well but that's probably something you don't need right now um, for a basic video so you've got like different 
options there. Now I would probably want the photograph that they're copying to be the same size as the as the box. So I can copy this box by doing the same thing as before, where I hold down control and just move it across. You have to click on the line if it's an empty box because there's nothing in the middle. Oh, actually that does work. I think it, no, it doesn't work on some other things, but generally I'm just in the habit of clicking on the lines. Okay, so now I can put a photograph in there. Now if this is for a classroom, it's not um, as many issues with copyright and things like that, but there is actually a resource in Publisher that's really handy, and that's the stock section. So this actually searches through some of the um, sort of copyright free images, the Creative Commons sort of stuff for commercial use. So I could type in anything, so maybe dog, something original, and it'll bring up all of these thumbnail images of different dogs. Obviously I could be more specific and it would bring up more specific results, but say I want a picture of a dog. So I will drag it across into the document and it's obviously too big so I can make it smaller. You can stretch and skew as well. You can do all the stuff you can do in most programs. Now I want to put it inside this box here so it's not cut off. So it's not looking strange. I want it to be inside that. So I can actually use this, this layer bar here and I can drag it into this rectangle. So all I do is in the blue area on the image, I just drag it down until it's hovering like that. And you'll see what happens is it creates a little arrow. So what it's done is it's created a, a little bit of a, uh, a hierarchy. So now that image is sitting inside that rectangle. So if I, if I select this now, it's going to select both the rectangle and the image. Now I can adjust the image if I open this up and click on it. So now I can do whatever I want with it. So there's a lot of room for customization in this on its own but it's just so much neater and faster to use than uh, anything I've seen before. You can also double click to get it, but I generally use the, the little layers bar on the right. Um, and with that, you pretty much can do a lot of different worksheets just with that setup. Now, I'm probably not completely happy with that shape, but I might put another uh, area down the bottom where they can tell a story about their dog or something like that. So I'll just do some underlines and say, you know, description or something. Okay, so now I have a, a, a rough worksheet and I would like to make this a template for my, you know, for, for future worksheets. So why would I do this? One, it's quite easy to find the templates in Publisher. You don't have to open up folders and things on your computer. You can just press template, open new, and it'll bring you a new template. Two, it, it, you run the risk of overwriting your existing files by accident if you don't rename them. So this opens a new file. It uses the, the stuff you've created uh, and three, the biggest reason is it t saves you a lot of time with not having to figure out all your fonts and say you might have a, a series of fonts. So, you know, you might have, um, you might have three or four fonts in one document. It will record all of that. So that's a big time saver as well. So, and, and everything's laid out where you want it. There's no moving anything around. So I could come in and make a second one of this where instead of a dog, I put a cat and I don't have to start it all over again and I don't risk 
losing anything by accidentally overwriting everything or I might just use it as a reference so if I want to start a second page I can just right click and go duplicate and then I might put another image in there or a smaller one or something anything so you can just do that infinitely and then you can go and export it as a template so in file export template and here's my my little folder that I don't actually have to go and manually access so I'll just go junior worksheet save that now it's it hasn't actually saved it as a file it saved it as a template so I might save that as a file see how it says untitled so I'll go save as and then I can put it wherever I like so for this I'll just put it on the desktop okay so the next thing I'm going to do is show you what it looks like from the start so I'll close that new file new now I'm going to go to my template section I've got a few here junior worksheet click on that and there it is ready to go so what all those steps I just did I don't have to do them again I can just open the template and go for it now if I want to make this into a PDF I can go file export this is just for some of the grammatic errors just ignore and continue now it's got all these options some of these I don't even know what they are I use vector sometimes I use PNG JPEG and PDF to export things so generally to make an, a, a PDF that I'm going to sell I'd want to flatten it which means when if I reopen it it won't have layers anymore that way it can't be easily duplicated and stolen um, and 300 dpi is what I would go for so that's pretty good quality you've got options here I might do a preview in 144 maybe so I'll export that and I'll just go AAA just quickly and it will bring up a preview of it and it's very important to check everything sometimes there can be things you don't expect but generally it's been pretty good and you can see it's very high resolution I find some of the other worksheets I've used when teaching don't have that level of resolution they're very pixelated and in in this day and age it's really important to have everything looking high quality um, to, you know to maximize kids engagement in their in their activities and you can see there's, there's, there's so much quality in that photograph now it's good practice to find the artist who created that photograph and put a reference down the bottom uh, especially if you're going to sell anything um, so yeah that's that's the, the basic starting point I've tried to work through slowly just to show the various steps that I would take just to get started and um, obviously there's a ton of other things you can do on this program and if you get the others then it, it just becomes exponentially more interesting and more powerful but that's a good starting point that you could go from okay thanks for watching